Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me switch this drawing real quick. Perfect. All right, my brother, we are live. There we go. Like we this. You so official. <laughs> <laughs> he said we are live. We're about to go. Hey, this is Gary Johnson with the BVP News. We are live on BVP. Uh, how are you? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. How you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just got uh oh, uh, we just got off the call with the. Uh, another future entrepreneur so if he's not an entrepreneur already not sure how official his business is but uh it's always great to have those conversations because it just renews your energy yes sir. and it's one of those things that i wanted when i got into this venture and to actually go through it now and just kind of hear his stories where he's at with it is uh it's nice it's yep. i agree so. i agree man no i i love the idea stage mm -hmm. i think that's that's where i thrive um mm -hmm. in helping people take the idea and then move it into reality mm -hmm. you know and i think a lot of times um i don't want to say we overthink things but i think we overthink things <laughs> yeah we overthink things and from my experience being an entrepreneur especially one that leverages technology like mm -hmm. yo like there are so many different tools you can use to just start mm -hmm. testing right and yeah. i think a lot of us think okay i need to figure out like who are all the team members i need to be able to bring on board and pay to build xyz but in reality it's like yo first of all you need to just go out just talk to some <laughs> potential customers first like go go and yeah. see <laughs> if they have the problem yeah. and have a desire to use your product or service so yeah, that is very true. Uh, I mean, that's the easy, that's the simple first step to any venture you're doing, right? It's just you have to start somewhere, right? So, uh, and it was funny because even this morning with a couple uh, friends of mine, we're starting to put like a, the beginnings of a business plan together, right? So potentially we want to be down the line being able to invest in something together. So, uh, and then as I was doing my research about, you know, just business plans and necessity of them and the ROI on them and how they help. Some of the articles is like, look, if you're starting a business, some of y'all just need to start. <laughs> it's like, and it rattled off at least a, a good four or five huge companies now. And I'm pretty sure Apple is one of them. It's like, they didn't necessarily have a business plan, but they had an idea and they just started running with it. And the business plan came along as they were building it. So uh, I think that just aids into I don't know if we ever mentioned this statement uh, before documenting anywhere, but part of what BVP is, what I would like, is we take the scariness out of being an entrepreneur and all that fear and you don't know where to start and what to do or where the money's going to come from. Like We want to kind of be that example that helps people to just go, like, you know what, I'm going to talk to them. They got me. You know, they were there before and now they're here now. Like, we kind of want to be that example of people just go for it. So, Yeah, I think that's the difference. That's the difference between entrepreneurs yeah. and people who are not entrepreneurs yeah. is they take that leap. Oftentimes yeah. it's a leap of faith. It's literally walking out and like, you're not totally blind, but mm -hmm. you will never have all the answers ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's <was> like, <laughs> for as long as you want to make excuses and say, oh, I need to figure out X, Y, Z before getting started, like you can make, make those excuses for the rest of your life mm -hmm. but i think the real entrepreneurs just say you know what? i'm gonna get started with what i can do today and yeah. we're gonna figure out the rest as we go yeah. and uh and it was also funny have you ever read uh thinking grow rich yes sir oh that is that is yeah probably <laughs> my I don't know, do i want to say it's my favorite book of all time <laughs> it's top three it's top three Got you. I just love how, like, the first, I don't know if it's the first chapter or what it is when it's, like, uh, it's essentially saying the wealthy people, like, you'll get the secret when you hear it. Oh. Right? It'll, <laughs> and, it says it'll pop out at you. That's what it says. It says it'll jump out at yeah, you. That's what it says. Yeah. 
And I remember it took, because uh, I listened to it one time, and then I was re-listening to it just to kind of, you know, make sure I get, because uh, sometimes there's books that you always have to go back to. Uh, a couple of my mentors taught me that. It's like, yeah, you're going to learn a lot, but there's going to be like a core five or seven books that you're always going to go back to. Yes, sir. Right. And as soon as they started talking about, uh, like, yeah, the secret's just going to jump out to you. The, yeah. He goes on for a tangent about 20, 30, 40, 50 people deep of just these entrepreneurs are just yep. going like, yeah, you can do it like such and such. You do such. And I'm just catching them like, these are regular people who oh, took yeah. an idea and just started. Okay. <laughs> right? So I cut the book off right there. I was like, bro, let me get That's back right. to work. I've got enough. Like, I've, I've read enough. <laughs> You know what I say too? I'm yeah. like, listen, yeah. the answer is on the cover. Think and Grow Rich <laughs> is what the, this is the book. The book is it's telling you what the secret is. So, you know, this is this yeah. book is profound. Like it is one of, to your point. It is it is a high quality book. It is one that you should read every year for sure. Yeah. And man, oh, like I read it and I was like, oh, this is okay. This is the mindset, right? This is what it's about. And yeah. It wasn't while I was reading the book when it jumped out at me, but it was like just in a, I was just in a moment where like the, the secret hit me and made yeah. it hit me. Like it took me out. I said, yo, this is what the book was talking about. <laughs> I was like, I get it. I, now I get it. And it was like, when you're, when you're just reading it, like you're like, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever. But nah, this is, this is the real deal. Oh gosh. That that slapped me up something serious. I was like, bro, what is my... Yeah, there was literally thousands, if not millions of people before me that were sitting in the same position. I was like, well, I just don't know. Uh, bro, just go do it. Like, <laughs> Yes, yeah. you will be. You will fail. It'll be yes, terrible. Sir. You'll not know what to go. You'll not know what the next step is. Yes, but you will figure it out. Like the rest of this whole list did, right? Yep. So, oh, man. That's it. Man. That's it. There's nobody has all the answers. There's not yeah. a, a guidebook to use to start every single type of business. And even if there was a guidebook to start a coffee shop, it's like you don't know all the market conditions that are going to happen. You don't know like how many people are going to come to your store, what the weather's going to be like next week or the week after the rest of the year for hurricanes going to come. Like it's a million different things that yeah. you could never plan for. And you just have to be, you have to be ready to adapt, but you at least have to put yourself out there and get started. It's yeah. Most awesome. definitely. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, I was thinking this earlier in the week is that like you can, you really cannot compare your situation to anybody else's situation. Right. Because you're like, even if y'all are in the same field, vector, industry, whatever, and you're trying to start something. And let's say, like, let's say me and you are both in this fitness game, right? But same age, whatever, but your business just seems to be doing better than mine. And I'm over here trying to understand, like, why is that the case? And then I started to realize how many factors go into a person's success, right? If you've been hearing about business and business plans and how to go about selling since you were six, and so now you're 26 and you know how to sell because you were told for 20 years how to sell. <laughs> of course, your business is going to be more successful. Like if I just figured out how to sell six years ago and I've only been technically knowing about sales for six years. Yeah, it's going to take you a minute to learn about sales to get to that point. So to try to compare yourself, even though a lot of the outside may be seem similar, it's not necessarily the case. And even if you gave people that story, like nobody's going to expect you to perform as well as somebody who's, you know, known about it for 20 years. It's kind of like when you see uh, when you see kids hooping and you're like, yo, who is that kid? Oh, well, that's Kobe Bryant Jr. Oh. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it's like, of course, like Steve Smith over here isn't going to be as nice as Kobe Bryant. They're like, yeah his pops taught him all that so it's yeah. like you got to understand your situation is very unique and just to make sure that whatever i guess deficits that you have within your knowledge or uh capability skill set you just have to take the time for you to go understand those things that you don't know and ask those people so that's the fact that they know it 
it's no shade slight to you. It's just one of the things that you got to do with the deck of cards that you were given. So that's it. That's it, man. Run your own race. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't compare yourself to others. Yeah. I think it's good to look at people as uh, inspiration and as mm -hmm. like a target. Like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I see what they're doing. Like that, I see that it's possible. So let mm -hmm. me figure out how to get there. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But yeah, you can't mm -hmm. expect yourself to be as good as anybody who has gotten, you know, training and resources and has had an investment in either themselves or their business um, for longer or in bigger amounts than you have to date. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, also, you know, still shout out to the scrappy founders. I, like, yeah. listen, <laughs> that's what I love the most is the people who, who make it stretch, you know, they make yeah. the most of what they're given. Yeah. No, that's uh, one of the things now that I enjoy and as you start to try to build a like a following and things like that everybody thinks like oh i need to go out uh even for myself right like oh i need to go out and get like uh editor to make my videos look super nice on whatever platform i'm gonna put them on and then you realize like with some dudes on instagram they're like bro all they're doing is just talking on a screen <laughs> and they got like five million followers like bro again sometimes we overthink things right like you can just literally just give people straight real raw and they'll enjoy it if people rock with you they rock with you and if they don't you know they don't it is yeah. what it is. So. that's all it is that's all it is man i'm glad you brought up this book <laughs> i'm glad you brought up this book because i'm like yeah I'm, it's yeah. about that time of year i need to read it again yeah, yeah. that's that's what wow. we're doing we're thinking grow rich daily yeah. What I will also challenge you to do is there is a black version of thinking grow rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I honestly I think I had it at some point. I must have given it away or something. Yeah. Is it like thinking grow rich, like a black man's guide sure. or something like that? Yeah, it's thinking grow rich, uh, a black choice. I just looked at it on my black phone. Black choice, okay. Uh, by Dennis Kimbro. So it just essentially gives you uh, Think and Grow Rich, and then he essentially breaks it down for uh, our perspective, which is right. nice. Right. I think I still got quotes and notes from that. Uh, I remember, yeah, let me see what I can find. I'll let you talk for a second. But yeah, let me see if that's the how it so That's one of my favorite things to do is to like, listen to an audio book. Just mm -hmm. like, <laughs> just let the wisdom punch you in the face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what he says in the book. He's like, uh, we live a life with only two actions, move or be moved. I was like, yes, move? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> so it's only two choices. Yeah. The choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. I love yeah, it. Man. There's a... Uh, What's the other one? There's another one, uh, Reginald Lewis. Mm -hmm. That one is why should white guys have all, all the fun? All fun. Yep. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I need to read that one. Is that yeah. one? It's another one. Um, oh man, I'm blanking on his name, but um, it's called Building Atlanta, mm -hmm. and it's about a black man. Uh, he was a he was a real estate developer, and I believe it's the Coca Cola Cola building mm -hmm. in Atlanta that his firm constructed. Mm -hmm. I haven't read the book; I have it, but just like knowing that those types of people exist and have existed mm -hmm. is like all the inspiration you need. It's like okay, yeah. yeah, it is my choice. Like it's all right. What am I doing? today <laughs> to get closer to whatever my my end goal is yeah yeah no that's the thing uh because a lot of it is what is what's the it is a poem by i'm gonna butcher her name i want to say marie williamson and mm -hmm. for a lot of people she was saying like it's not it's not our darkness that we're afraid of it's our light Mm. that were crazy you know what i'm saying so it's like it's not 
that were scared of being like this terrible person. Like you're truly scared of being that person that like is the purest form of yourself that like helps people is what you're scared of. Wow. You know? So I always think about that quote of just like trying to understand why that's so scary. You know, I think, well, I think for some people, I think being seen is the scary, <laughs> even though some people want to be seen. Yeah. And there's all uh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I think also people are afraid of yeah. what it feels like to not be afraid, if that makes any sense. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> uh, I, it's it, it's a little bit scary to have like absolute freedom. Yeah. Like when somebody's like, yeah, pick whatever you want. You're like, what do you? What do you mean pick whatever I want? <laughs> like, I can just what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like no, you have to you have to tell me what to do. And that's uh yeah. And I remember uh, telling somebody in my group chat that earlier because he sent this list of uh like twenty five books, right? I was like, yo, uh go ahead and tell me your top three because sometimes for a majority of people a bunch of options leads to inaction. Mm-hmm. Yep. So if you give so it's essentially like, it's like choice. Yeah, it's like choice overload where it's like I have so many options that I can do, you just think and do nothing. Yeah. Right. So uh also there's this thing called a it's like a multi potential light. Like that's somebody's like it's just the essence of a person who's like they just seem to be good at a whole bunch of different things. And since they can be good at a whole bunch of different things, they don't know what to do, so they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, I'm the type that always likes to keep it practical. I'm like, if I know that this is one of my downfalls, I'm just going to pick something to do. Like, if I'm going to be good at like, I'm just going to be good at it. So, if I know that indecision is killing people, I'm just going to make a decision. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, well, again, sometimes we like overthink the book. Oh, yeah. Sounds like you must have read this book because decisiveness yeah. is... Uh, one of the key factors of, uh, yes, achievement. So you're on it. You on right. it. You living it. And also getting the space like, bro, is there any other option? Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, honestly, like, I can. Actually, I don't even. Yeah, because I think words are powerful. So what I was going to say, I'm not going to let out. But okay. uh, failing at something mm. isn't – that's not the worst no, it is case not. scenario for me, right? The worst yeah. case scenario is knowing you could have did something and then just living with the thoughts of, I've well, what? Tried. Yep. Yeah. I would uh, – that, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse because for me, I'm like – I'm trying everything. I'm like, yeah, like yeah. I do not have a fear of failure. Mm-hmm. I realized that last week. I was like, oh, that's why I'm able to like coach people in the way that I do, because I'm yeah. not afraid to share an idea and say, well, what if we did this? What if we tried this? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And for every like idea I've ever had where I'm like, oh, this could that could be something. Mm-hmm. It's likely that I just created something <laughs> to like make it yeah. real. And if it, you yeah. know, turned into something uh, that was like sustainable, great. But if not, it's like, cool, no worries. But I tried the thing. I created it, put it out into the world, and I'm happy enough with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because my thing now is trying to get really good at making the things that are in my head come to life. Like, I think that's its own muscle. Right. True. And yeah. yeah, I like to call that like your creator muscle is what I'm yes, calling. Yes, sir. Right. And I book for that the, too. Yeah. And the dope part is like that's a God skill, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, like that's what he did. He's like, I saw this and he created it. Right. So the yeah. fact that we can even yeah. touch that level of like the fact that we even have that ability is amazing to start. So the fact that you can do something where you're working on that and doing it on the regular is 
a, a blessing as an undersold. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So no, that's it is what a I've been trying yeah. to do. You're right. There's a book called Creative Confidence. That's what I usually call it. It's creative confidence. And it, it is a muscle, like you said. Like, it is something that I'm comfortable doing now after having just, like, refined that muscle and, in a way, taking yourself, taking your, your mindset to the gym, right? You take your muscles to the gym. You can take your mindset to the gym. Mm -hmm. And that's by not just reading books, but also just, like, going through activities and exercises of, like, brainstorming and ideation and just experimenting. So... It is uh it, it is not something that well, you know what it is natural. It is natural, like you said, it is a God given gift. And I think as kids we all have it. I know as kids we all have it, but then through school, you know, high school, college, you lose it. And uh we were just talking about that yeah. on the last call. It's like, yeah, like universities really prepare you to be a cog in a wheel, right? Yeah. But there's there's mm -hmm. some of us who who never sort of fell into that trap or or came out of the trap. Yeah. And we're like, nah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, for whatever reason, reinvent the wheel. <laughs> I have the audacity yeah. to believe I can reinvent the wheel. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, uh, I forgot who said it, but it's like, to, yeah, you gotta be, you have to be crazy to think that you can make a change in the world, right? Yes. Like, that's not uh, a logical thought that, like, one out of, what, seven billion people can actually, like, do something to change this whole globe going on. So it's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. So, sure. Oh man, love that, love that, yeah. love that, love it as well. Well, this was a great chat, my brother. I know we both got business to get back to. Um, yes. I want to, I want to mm. drop a quick uh, commercial for an amazing okay. company uh, by by the hey. name of Mocktail Club. Uh, Mocktail hey. Club is a Howard affiliated business uh, founded by an alumni. Her name is Pauline. And while she was pregnant, she wanted a drink. She wanted a nice, tasty beverage. Uh, but of course, she couldn't have alcohol. So she concocted her own premium crafted non-alcoholic cocktails, right? Natural ingredients um, and all different types of flavors that are inspired by travel. So uh, this week, I'm helping her out. She's here in Philly at this big expo for uh, emerging like natural food brands. And um, she's got four flavors, Havana Twist, Capri Spritz, Bombay Fire, and uh, Manhattan Berry. So I'm volunteering at her booth uh, for the past like five hours, just pouring up drinks, pouring up drinks, pouring up drinks. And like the people are loving them. They're like, where can I find them? Guess what? Her store, MocktailClub.com, Amazon.com, Whole Foods, and Giant. Hey. She's launching in Giant in like two to two weeks from now. Uh, yeah. So she is just killing the game. I just wanted to shout her out real quick uh, <laughs> while we were here. But yeah. an example of an amazing entrepreneur who took an idea, ran with it, and it has opened up so many different doors and opportunities, and she is prospering because of it. I appreciate it. All right, commercial break. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you for yes, indeed. indulging me. Yes, indeed. That is the, that's the purpose of this platform, you know, make sure we're calling out other entrepreneurs trying to do it like uh like we're trying to do it so. yes sir that's it man that's it all right brother i appreciate you as always yes indeed likewise I'll see you on the other end see you around the herd next week yes indeed bye, bye brother all right. peace bye bye, -bye.